Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of The Great Restaurants of Banner Elk. I'm here with Tom Jankovich of the Painted Fish Cafe. Tom, great to see you. Good Thanks to see so you. Thanks so much for being here Thank with you. us today. And, My pleasure. And, uh, and tell us if you would, I mean, you have an unbelievably interesting background. A lot of people know Painted Fish Cafe in Banner Elk, right across from the entrance of Sugar Mountain. Um, but you've been up here in these mountains since 2000. You were the, the chef at Grandfather Golf and Country Club. But let's go back to the beginning, like where you're from, and let's talk about, you know, up in Racine, Wisconsin. Originally from Racine, Wisconsin, um, went to school at UW, UW Madison. Um, got kind of cold there, so I thought I'd take a trip out to California and, and see what it was like there for a summer, and stayed there for four years. Yeah, been cooking ever since then. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you had some interesting places. Tell us, like, where you you went to Florida, and tell us some of the places you were a chef at, at, in Florida. In Florida, I was at Boca West Country Club. I was at Weston Rolling Hills Country Club. Uh, Mariner Sands Country Club, so that so it doesn't sound like I'm moving around a lot. It was five years each one of those, so I spent 15 years in Florida. And then I moved to Savannah, Georgia to the Landings Club. It was five years there, and then went to Richmond, Virginia to the Dominion Club for five years, and then moved to Grandfather Country Club in 2000, 2001, right at the beginning of that. Yeah. Some big clubs there. Tell us about you. And Dan Marino, Mark Duper were some of the members at one of the clubs you were down in Florida. Yeah, at Western Rolling Hills, it was a startup community. Uh, the, soon to be a big club country club with golf courses etc cetera, etc cetera. and and a couple of the uh, players from the, the dolphins were uh, at the time it was sponsored by um, disney they started the whole thing and so um they brought them in gave them homes and this that and the other as a you know a perk to it and and it was funny because there was no cable out there and we had satellite and so at night sometimes Dan would come over and watch fights, and I'd keep the restaurant open, and we'd watch a fight here and there. So it was kind of fun. So yeah. it was it was an interesting place. And when you first started out in Boca Raton, you actually were there looking to go on the PGA Tour, weren't you? Yeah, I gave it a shot for two years. Yeah. Um, it was a lot more difficult than I thought, but it was a sure fun try. So it's one of those things that if you don't try it when it's in your system, you'll be mad at yourself forever. So yeah. I've always said I was going to make senior tour, but I'm past that now too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you were, but you were down there. You'd play golf all day, and uh -huh. then and then you in the evening you'd be a chef there at Boca Raton. Yeah, I was a sous chef there at Boca West, and yeah, I'd work. I'd play golf six eight hours every morning until I had to go to work, and then go to work from two to ten and. Get up and do it again. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's a great life. Yeah, right? it was it was fun at the time. Yeah. Yep. And tell us about the landings in Savannah. That's actually what the biggest private membership. From what I know, it's the largest private country club in the country. It's six thousand plus members. There's eight golf courses and four clubhouses, and it's on its own island, Skidaway Island, in the south of uh, Savannah, Georgia, which is an amazing place. Um, it was a great run there too yeah and then you went up to richmond mm -hmm. and then as you said in 2000 2001 you came down to grandfather golf and country club mm -hmm. here in the mountains and what drew you then to the to the mountains here well first i'd been looking for work or for a different job for about a year and i turned down several of them because it didn't fit my family because i had young kids this that and the other and when i came up here and i saw the lifestyle and the way people were and how it was so much different than any place i'd ever been it was quiet it was it was it was it was just amazing and the mountains is where I'm going to live from now on. That's the way it works. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works, yep. You actually offered like a job at Augusta National. You had a chance to go there. You that was one of them, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. and, but you really loved these mountains. And at the time, your children were fairly young then, weren't yep. they? They were, yeah. uh, God, if I had to guess, they were uh, two in grade school, one in middle school at the time. So yeah. they started off going to uh, Banner Elk Elementary and uh, the middle school at Avery. Yeah. And we went from there. Yeah. But they, they acclimated pretty quickly, and none of them have left yet, really? <laughs> which is pretty neat, yeah. Yeah, and so you love these mountains. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Tell us what it was like at Grandfather Golf and Country Club, because they're a beautiful country club there. Tell it, great place, um, great membership, um, probably one of the nicest clubs as far as members and, and, and board and all that's concerned that I've ever worked with, and I'd been in club for 20-something years at the time, and the whole idea for there was that it was a relaxed atmosphere. They came for the weekends to enjoy the mountains and, and get away from the things that I got away from, too, so it was a great experience. Yeah, very beautiful back oh, then, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing, yeah. Yeah, that is great, and so, but not only did you, did you work there as a chef at uh, Grandfather Golf Country Club, but you also... Uh, taught basketball, coach basketball. Tell us about that. Well, uh, grandfather closes down from January, February, March, and part of April every year, and so I was afforded the time off, which was kind of neat, and um, looking for something to do because I'd never had nothing to do in my whole life. I'd been working all my life, and 
an opportunity came up. Actually, my daughter asked me if I would coach the team because they were looking for a coach. So I started with the girls' team and then did that for two years and then the boys' team for five years from there. And that was a great experience. Is that Valley Cruces? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is a great, it's a great age group. You have yeah. a lot of influence on them. That yeah, yeah and, and they're a different group that age. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> tell you, especially boys. Boys are fun that age. <laughs> but, but you, so you enjoyed doing oh, that? Oh, absolutely. We would go on Sundays on off days and play pickup games and their dads and the kids would come and it would just play for hours it was fun yeah and it really makes you you've become really a part of the community then haven't you i feel the, like it, yeah yeah mm -hmm. doing all these things and working with the youngsters and, and the families and then and a lot of that carried over because i know that when you left grandfather golf and country club to, to open up the paint of fish cafe there in in banner elk there was so much excitement because people knew you so well from grandfather golf country club so they knew it was going to be a great restaurant before you even opened yeah i put a little pressure but i wasn't worried about it we <laughs> i've been cooking for so long it's second nature to me now so and we just thought that we'd do food that's fun and and uh, affordable at the same time and we've been doing that ever since yeah mm -hmm. and tell us so paint fish cafe as i mentioned was across the st street from the entrance of uh, sugar mountain so it's perfectly located right there as you drive as you're heading down um, you know, from the Tyne Castle going toward Banner Elk, it's on your right, you know, mm -hmm. right there. So it's a, a great location. And w tell us the story about the Painted Fish Cafe, how you can, it's a great name. Well, the name came about because I had my father and another person were um, helping me out financially to open the place. And I originally wanted to call it Scratch Kitchens because everything we do at the restaurant is from scratch, except for maybe making the ketchup and things like that. But for the most part, we do everything from scratch. And so I wanted to call it Scratch Kitchen, and then eventually open another one was what the idea was. Well, they didn't like the, the name. And in the interim of all that, um, I had seen a, a sculpture. It's a metal sculpture of a kind of a lionfish with a, a wire that holds a little fish in front of it. His mouth is open, and he's going to eat this fish. And it was hanging at uh, Final Touches on 105. And had been hanging there for a long time. And, and a couple years earlier, I had told my wife before this, we even thought about opening the restaurant, I told my wife, I'm going to go get that painted fish. Yeah. She said, okay. So I went down to get it, and I found out it was $350. I <laughs> said, I'm not going to pay $350 for it. So I came home, and she wanted to know where it was. And I said, I didn't get it because it was too expensive. Well, when they decided they didn't like the name of Scratch Kitchen, I started thinking, what about Painted Fish? And I could use that as my logo, and, and I'll go buy the thing for the, for the restaurant out there. And uh, everybody loved the name of it. The only drawback I have is they think I'm just a seafood restaurant because it's a fish. It's in there. But uh, that's where it came from. Someday I was going to get that painted fish, and so I opened a restaurant called The Painted Fish. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is beautiful. It's a tremendous name. Um, but tell us, you know, because if people do have the, the preconception that you do seafood only, but you do a wide range, you do anything, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We do, we do um, fun food with a twist and recognizable food with a twist. We take things like originally on my menu I had a Cuban sandwich with which was nothing like most Cubans, with the exception of it had the proteins the same. Um, we do uh, something else we'll talk about later is an ahi tuna that's got uh, risotto and wasabi and soy sauce and, and a coleslaw on top of it. And we do, um, oh, it's all kinds of things that are, are recognizable food, and we twist them just a little bit so it's a little bit more fun than the norm. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so tell us you know, the price range and everything, because sometimes people think that it's going to be very expensive, but it's, sure. it's not, is it? We're, I mean... 80% of our, 90% of our entrees are under $20. We do a lot of half portion items also, there's, so there's small portions, and that reduces the cost down a little bit, but it also gives you the opportunity to try some other things that are on the menu also, so you're not getting gouged for 50 bucks going out to dinner, and you can try an appetizer, maybe a salad, and a half a portion of an entree, and have a meal that way, and enjoy yourself and not lose the, you know, the bank. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Do tremendous food there. I've been there a number of times, and I know when my parents come up to the mountains all the time, that's the first place the they yep. want to come. Uh -huh. Yeah, they mm -hmm. love to come there. To and they actually come the day they come up. They come and tell me, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. They do. And uh, But, yes, fantastic food. And, and what really, you know, your passion, you, you love to cook, don't you? You love being a chef. Yeah. It's Even on my day off, I cook. Uh, I cook. That's what I do. It's It's... I guess it's the way you show love to people, all those things, and, and it's just, and I'm, I'm fairly decent at it, and I'm quick at it, and I just enjoy it. I love, my favorite thing is to walk past the table, whether it's at my house or, or in the dining room at the restaurant, and not hear anybody talking. And that's my favorite thing, and I'll stop and say, hey, nobody's saying anything, it must be good, and that's my favorite part. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, that is, that is, and tell you what, you do a fantastic job there. And tell us, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna show you here doing uh, three different, um, 
entrees. That are on the menu. And, yeah. and tell us and tell us about these three entrees before we go to the the footage and, and show you cooking them. Well, the first one is uh, I don't know if it's going to be the first one, but it's the ahi uh, sesame seared ahi tuna, and it's just a fantastic dish. All three of these dishes have been on the menu since we opened for four and a half years now. Um, it has a nice creamy risotto on the bottom. It has a wasabi aioli, which takes wasabi and tones it down just a little bit. We do a soy glaze, which gives you that little salt flavor to it, and then a really, really rare seared piece of tuna that's very nice. Um, on top of that, and on top of that is a, is a chilled Asian coleslaw. It's got a little sesame oil, all of this, that, and the other. So you have warm and creamy, you got spicy, you got a little salty, you got a nice piece of fish with a little crunch to it, and it's just an awesome dish. Yeah. Yeah. I've had. Two or three people so far say that it was the best dish they've ever had, and it's the perfect meal, so I like that one. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. tell from your description there. I mean, you really have thought this out, haven't you? Because you've got such a, a variance of combinations there to make it bring all the elements in that Absolutely. you want. Absolutely, yeah. Everything we do, we, we think it out. You know, sometimes we get a little bit by the fly, but, you know, <laughs> come up with something on the, at, the, at the last minute. But for the most part, everything's thought out, and I guess over the years, most of it just comes second nature to me now, so I, I know what's supposed to work and what doesn't work with things. So. It must take a long time to prepare, because I know you go in early in the morning and work, you know, get everything, getting mm -hmm. the sauces ready, getting the everything. So it takes a, a long time to get all the, the different things together. It, it's, it's just a matter of organization. That's all it really is. And then once it's time to go, everything is what we call is mise en place. It's all the things you need to create. The dishes are right in front of us. and. And you'll see in the in the in the clip that it's pretty quick and easy once you have everything ready to go in front of you. So yeah, mm -hmm. and tell us about the scallops dish you're gonna make. Honey curried scallops. Um, originally, it was a shrimp dish a long time ago that I made for my family. Um, now it's it's one of the number one sellers on our menu. Uh, the biggest thing about our scallop dish is we use what's called a dry pack scallop. A lot of times you'll go to the store, you'll see scallops, and they're sitting in this blue water that's. It's a phosphorus or something of that nature. I don't even know what it is, but I don't want to because I don't want to have anything to do with it. These are fresh shucked, and they come in a burlap sack inside of a can, and so they're 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 dry. None of the juices have come out. They're very sweet and really beautifully pungent. And what we do is we really sear them off hard on one side so they get a caramelization onto it, flip it over, and then pop it in the oven. And then we serve that again with risotto, which is kind of redundant, but we, a few dishes have that on it, with sautéed spinach on top. And then we take a... Um, honey curry and lemon juice and bring it to a boil together and it becomes this glaze and we'll drizzle that over the top of it and then top it with a combination of toasted peanuts coconut and curry powder that we grind up into little crunchies and we sprinkle those around the top of it it's just a phenomenal dish yeah mm -hmm. it, it, it is. really it sounds is sounds tremendous and then you're going to do one too a chicken a bacon chicken yeah this one um the sauce that goes on this dish, you can put on anything. I've had people say they'd put it on ice cream. Um, my kids, originally the sauce was a dressing for a warm spinach salad. Back in the day, they used to always, everybody served a warm spinach salad with a bacon dressing, and that's basically what this is. Um, we sear off a piece of chicken. It comes with grits and julienne vegetables, which the julienne vegetables on the dish, if you want your kids to eat vegetables, make these because they'll eat them. They, Actually, my daughters will just eat that plain now by itself. And then it's, it's coated with this wonderful bacon, Dijon, brown sugar glaze that goes on top of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds exciting. I tell you what, we're going to go now and let you watch Tom as he, as he prepares and, and uh, these three entrees. You have honey curried scallops, uh, you have bacon chicken, and you have sesame tuna. And so it's going to be very exciting here. And let's watch. And, and uh, Tom is fantastic at this. So enjoy seeing how he does this and makes it look far easier than it is. No, because. it really is easy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's go to the go now and we'll watch Tom do that. Hi, I'm Tom from the Painting Fish Cafe. We're located just down the road from the entrance to Sugar Mountain. We've been here for four years and today what we're going to do is make three dishes that have been on our menu since we started. Our bacon chicken, our honey curried scallops, and a sesame seared tuna. What we have here is U10 dry scallops. They're the best scallops you'll ever eat. A lot of times you'll get scallops that are in a, in a liquid that's almost blue. They don't have half the flavor these do. These are as good as they get right here. No salt and pepper needed for these. Nice hot pan. You hear the sizzle when it hits it. And we're just going to let them sit until they get nice and dark on the, on the bottom. In the meantime, I'll make some more spinach. We love spinach here. If you notice, we have uh, colored tongs for allergies. 
So red always goes for scallops. We have a yellow one for shrimp, anything like that could be an allergy to someone. We don't want to have the same pair of tongs touching chicken, whatever, onto it. So different colored ones for different moves. Just going to loosen them on the bottom of the pan. Lamb brown. That'll take about two or three minutes. Smell great, too. <laughs> this dish has risotto on it also. We're going to do basically the same thing we did with the tuna. See, they're starting to brown slightly on the edges. So we're looking for a nice caramelization on it. Check them to see what they look like. Nice color right there. Exactly what we're looking for. And we'll take these and pop them in the oven for about three minutes and they're done. We're going to do magic of television in a second. Pull that out early, okay? Then what we have is our curry glaze. And all it is is lemon juice, curry powder, and honey. And it's local honey from here. Um, different sources, but all local honey. And then we drizzle around the outside. You don't want to overdo it because it's curry is pretty strong. And then what we have here is peanuts, coconut, and curry powder toasted together. So it adds a crunch element to the plate. And we'll If I think if I ever take this off the menu, people would kill me. <laughs> there you go. What I'm working on right now is yeah. risotto. We cook it al dente, so then we can reheat it to order. And then we, what we do is we call add a little love to it. So we add a little bit of cream, some butter, and this is good for you, by the way, and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Cook that until it's incorporated. It's low cal too. Alright. That's good. Then I'm gonna grab a piece of tuna. This is one of our most famous dishes we've had on the menu since we started. I have a nice piece of ahi tuna, we're gonna salt pepper, and then we're gonna dip it into our sesame seeds. So we have a nice crust on it. Put it on my flat top griddle with just a little bit of clarified butter, which is butter with all the fat cooked out of it. Let it sear. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna get the plate ready. Now what we have is soy sauce that's been thickened. So it'll stay where we put it. And wasabi aioli, basically a wasabi mayonnaise just so it's not so spicy and it's creamy. Then I'm going to take some of the risotto. I've had someone tell me this is a perfect meal, so I like it. <laughs> now I'm going to cook some spinach, again with the clarified butter. In a real hot pan. And just 
wilted. A little bit of salt and pepper again, not too much. on the sesame side, I'm going to flip it over and we serve this rare. Now it's going to come off the grill. Go to my cutting board. All right, and then we're going to cut it on an extreme bias so we can show off the nice color inside. Place it on the plate. Then I have what we call an Asian coleslaw. It's made with sesame oil, soy, cabbage, red peppers, and that goes on top. There you have it. It's a great dish because you have every element into it. You have salty from the soy, a little spice from the wasabi, creaminess from the risotto. The spinach is, of course, wonderful. Everybody loves spinach when it's cooked, right? The tuna's got a little crunch from the sesame on top. And then on top, there's a nice chilled element of the dish that kind of gives you a difference between hot and cold, and it changes textures for you at the same time. It's one of our most popular dishes. It's been on the menu since we've been open four years ago. This is called bacon chicken, and it's another famous dish that's been on the menu since we started. I'm going to put it in my hot pan and let it brown a little bit more. If I can get a sizzle out of it, that'd be great. Alright, been going for a little while, nice and brown. What it's called is an airline breast of chicken. The airlines came up with this chicken breast because it has the uh, wing bone still in it and it made it look like you got more food. But at the same time, what it did is it created you to make a chicken breast that was like you cooked it on the bone, which is a lot more tender than just a plain chicken breast. And that's in the oven. In the meantime, cook our vegetables, heat our grits. want to get your kids to eat vegetables, this is the vegetable to do. A little bit of clarified butter. And then what we have is a mixture of zucchini, yellow squash, carrots, and red onions. And it's a phenomenal dish. I don't like squash all that much, but this way it comes out really delicious. Nice hot pan. In about 30 seconds it's done. What we have here is yellow grits from Anson Mills, which are the best grits in the whole world. A little bit of cheese. So that's going to come over here and go on the plate. Okay, and what we have here is our bacon glaze, and it's a combination of bacon, Dijon mustard, brown sugar, and vinegar. And originally this was a dressing, warm dressing for a spinach salad, but my kids would eat anything with this on it, and so we came up with a chicken dish for it. There you go, bacon chicken. Right here we have our 
sesame seared tuna with wasabi aioli, soy sauce, spinach, risotto, and an Asian slaw. This one here is our curry scallops. Again, risotto and spinach with a honey curry scallop, or honey curry sauce on top, and some coconut crunchies is what we call them. It's peanuts, coconut, and curry blended together and toasted. Then our most famous one is the bacon chicken. Uh, it's a pan seared, really delicious breast of chicken with Anson Mills grits, our julienne vegetables, and a it's a sweet and sour bacon glaze that goes on it. So I tell you, that was fantastic. You really are something. You could have your own television show in terms of preparing the way, the way you're so good at, at the demonstrating and talking and doing it all at the same time. Well, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put one on MTN. Yeah, but I mean, but that was really interesting and how you t put all those elements together in each one of those dishes and, and brought it and it looked beautiful too. All of them looked really beautiful whenever you. you had them finished Thank you. yeah well that's that's one thing i tell all my cooks that i've worked with all my life is that first make it taste good then you can figure out how to make it look nice because if it tastes good it, it'll come together that way and it, yeah. and it usually does and one of the things i think you've come up with a tremendous idea you were telling me about it the other day um how you're going to have pre-made meals you know for the for the during ski season for the people that come up and tell us about that because that's a fantastic well, uh, idea you know i noticed over the last couple of years of going to the grocery stores over the winter that people are in there buying everything they need for all their meals for the weekend and then they got to go skiing and come home and cook all this stuff and so my idea is and we'll have the menus coming out in the next week or so um is that we'll prepare meals that all you have to do is heat and serve that literally will only cost you about 20% more than if you went to the grocery store and bought everything you had to have into there. So this will limit them. You could buy your beverages and the little things you want on the snacks and whatnot not on the side. And you can have these meals put in your condos before you even walk in the door. They'll be in your refrigerator and it's ready to rock and roll. All you have to do is just follow the instructions, either oven or microwave or whatever, stovetop heat, put it together and you're done. It's five, ten minutes and you're out. And, and coming home from a long day of skiing, the last thing anybody wants to do is cook. And I kind of developed these over ski trips I've taken over the, over the last few years when I've taken a bunch of kids out west skiing, and I'd bring all the food ready to go. And so I'd go ski all day, and I didn't want to cook all day either, so I developed it where it was meals I could prepare very quickly and, and already ready to go. So, Plus, it's better than having to go and do it all yourself. You know? Oh, yeah. I think yeah. it's a fantastic <clears throat> idea because I know so many people come up, and like you said, they don't. if you go out to the grocery store, you end up spending far more money than you for for two days, you know, because you need so many things, but you're not going to use it. And half of it either sits there, you got to pack it up and take it home, and then yeah. it goes and, bad on the way so home. So it ends up <laughs> you, you spend a lot of money, and you really end up wasting most of it anyway. Right, and exactly. and then people a lot of times, you know, don't want to have go out and get dressed up and go out to the restaurants right. and stuff. Right. And here you have an opportunity, like you said, coming in whether you're a skier or whether you're not a skier. I mean, I I know a lot of people who don't ski who would absolutely love right. to, to do that. Well, that's the hopes. Um, it's ten, uh, uh, what's the word? I mean, historically, this, the winter time is much slower for us, and so started thinking about what we can do and to create some more revenues for ourselves, et cetera, et cetera, and make things better for everyone. And so far, everyone I've spoken with is very excited about it. So it'll be on our website probably before the end of the month. Yeah. It'll be on there. All the all the stuff that's available, all the logistics to it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See so your website there, Painted Fish Cafe. Uh, dot com. So you know, go to that and to see it. And I think I even think a lot of people that maybe even live up here would would like the opportunity We're to do so. that. We're hoping yeah. so. You think it might end up being something you do year round down the road? It's possible. We it, it, we would have to get another facility if we did that because in the summertime we're just so busy. The size of our, our kitchen and the and the facility we have, it's it's hard enough just to maintain the the people that are coming to our our din dining room. So. Um, but yes, uh, we've catered a lot too. We've done some you know, parties in this outside of the, the restaurant and inside the restaurant too. But it really puts a strain on the restaurant itself, and I don't want to, I don't want to hurt the restaurant by trying to do that. So yeah. it, it's very possible, yeah. And so, you, tell us about your catering. If you would, if anybody's interested in in in, in the winter time, uh, the, the the facility's open Sunday nights, Monday and Tuesdays. It's wide open. You can use the restaurant. Um, we've done small parties within our restaurant while we were doing a la carte stuff at the same time, and we've also done takeout things where people can order fried chicken, which is one of our most famous dishes at the restaurant. We've run every Wednesday night, by the way. Um, uh, They'll call and, and say, you know, three days out and say, we want you know, 200 pieces of chicken and mashed potatoes and green beans and what that goes with it. We'll have it ready for them. And then we've also done a few weddings and a couple of rehearsal dinners off-premise, going to a few of the, the uh, venues in the area, you know, and 
brought food to it and brought chefs with it. We're also going to offer uh, in-home chefs where you can um, you can say I have eight people at my house and we want a nice meal. We plan the meal out for you and we'll prepare the food at the restaurant, bring it to you, and a chef will actually cook it in your restaurant. Not myself necessarily, but I have a little network of guys that can, guys and girls that will uh, that are very very willing to do these kind of things and they'll come in, they'll cook, they'll serve, they'll clean, and they'll walk away and you'll have a great meal and you don't have to Golly. do anything. Well, that's so, tremendous. Yeah, it, 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 we hope it'll start off slow so we don't get out, you know, to a point where we can't handle it and we disappoint anyone. And if it gets to where we want it to be, then we're going to look for a new facility to do that uh, outside stuff. Well, you have some fantastic ideas there. They're really going to be yeah, I hope so. very valuable. Yep. So tell us about in the wintertime. As you mentioned, there's, if somebody wanted, uh, the, you know, to be in the restaurant and actually have the restaurant, you know, for, for an event, you said Sunday night during the wintertime, Sunday nights or Monday or Tuesday. Yep. Tell us your hours now uh, during the wintertime. During the wintertime, we're open Wednesday through Saturday from 5 to 9 for dinner. And then Friday and Saturday, 11 to 2 for lunch. And then Sunday for brunch from 11 to 2. And brunch is a fun thing. You should come to yeah, brunch. Tell us about brunch because a lot of people might like brunch, that. Brunch, uh, it's not your normal brunch. We have things like pasta for breakfast, um, breakfast tacos we have as a special now and then. Um, I have a sweet potato waffle with bananas foster sauce on it that's actually gluten-free, which it started out not being gluten-free, and I kind of played with it a little bit, and it came out better being gluten-free than it was with gluten into it. Um, we do a high country Benedict where we use a Goodnight Brothers ham that's made right here in Boone, um, shaved on a biscuit with a egg and hollandaise on top of it. It's just an awesome little Benedict <laughs> to it. Um, omelets, uh, tater tots, truffle fries. We do all kinds of fun things for brunch. So it's all a la carte too. I tell you what, it amazes me when I listen to Tom talk there because you 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 just say these things that are like that are very fancy to to a person like me, very fancy mm -hmm. restaurant things. And but it's just like a common thing. You know, to you, it's just something that you do every day type thing. Right. And you go to some places where it'll cost you an arm and a leg to do those things. And we yeah. kind of like like the whole concept of the restaurant to start with was we were going to have great beers because we have a great beer bar. Um, and do really fun food that's affordable, that's not outrageous. I've always hated going out to dinner and spending $50 a person and then being disappointed in what I ate. I'd rather you come in and spend 30 bucks a person and say, that was great, I'm coming back, and that's what we're looking for. And Over the years, we've kind of grown, gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. It's, it's been fun. And tell us, if you would, for the viewers who don't know, you, your bar area there, because that's beautiful, right? It's, uh, I think we have 11 seats at the bar, two TVs up there. We don't run the sound on to it, have sports on it all the time. We have uh, 10 beers on tap. Two of them you'd recognize, and the other eight are usually either local or something off the wall, um, but all um, microbrews, all of them. And then we have 19 other beers in bottles and cans. Golly. And it's, it's fun. Yeah. Originally, we didn't have alcohol, um, but I, a lot of people were not coming because they needed to have that. I don't know if that's relevant to anything. Yeah. But we carry one of each thing, one vodka, one gin, one. And we're not trying to be a bar. We're trying to be a beer and wine and good food place, but we have alcohol available also. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, a tremendous place there. Painted Fish Cafe right across from the entrance to Sugar Mountain uh, Ski Resort there. And and Tom Jankovic, you've done a fantastic job for so many years. Everybody knows you up in this area because you were the uh, the chef at Grandfather Golf and Country Club for 10 years, the longest serving chef in the history of Grandfather Golf and Country <laughs> Club. And then you've opened your own restaurant in two, April of 2011, doing fantastic. You have the bar there next to it. You have all, all these wonderful uh, entrees, and we saw you make three of them, but they're you know all reasonably priced and just fantastic. And it's a pleasure to have you here with us because you do a Thank wonderful you. job, Appreciate and uh, you really are something special for for our community. And I think the ideas you have with the prepackaged meals and with the you know with going sending someone there to their house to cook it also if they if they choose, and and all the the catering opportunities that you offer, you really have some fantastic ideas. And I, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Tom Jankovic, uh, Paint a Fish Cafe. Thanks for watching another episode of Great Restaurants of Banner Elk. We'll be back with more of the Mountain Television Network.